Let's talk about empathic curiosity. How do you know what the people you lead really care about? How do you help them to be more authentic and to give their all to the enterprise? I'm talking here about the use of emotions, including natural empathic emotions, in the service of imagining and cognitively having a filled in understanding of other people. The first thing is the curiosity. You have to recognize that you don't know how other people feel. That's the worst thing. We don't say you know how people feel. We have different worlds. And it's empathic curiosity when you let your emotional cues begin to help you imagine those worlds. This is not about being nice. Robert McNamara was Kennedy's Secretary of Defense during the Vietnam War. In a famous film, Fog of War, which we should all see, he was asked what his biggest mistake was. And he said the biggest mistake they made is they failed to empathize with the enemy. They didn't understand what the people they were finding really cared about. When I was in medical school, I was amazed how doctors had no curiosity about patients with cancer or depression, what was really bothering the patient most. And when I talked about it and tried to vividly imagine my patient's world, I was told that would make me a less effective doctor. Luckily, 20 years of research has shown that my professors were wrong. As doctors or leaders, you know there's three things that really matter. Identifying the problem correctly, motivating change, and helping people deal with bad news. I want to show you using medicine, my work in medicine as an example, how all three are supported by empathic curiosity. First of all, when patients come to see doctors, they don't always talk about what they're most scared and anxious about. They, they first look and say a little bit, then they read the doctor's face. If they find empathic attunement and curiosity, that's as here, then they disclose the breast lump, the drinking problem, the opioid issues that they were afraid to talk about. Second of all, biggest reason healthcare is wasteful, 50% of prescriptions are thrown in the garbage. Patients don't take what we prescribe. Why? They don't trust their doctors. Biggest predictor of trust? the sense that the doctor worries about the things that you're worried about with you. We have good diagnosis, effective health care. Third crucial part of medicine is giving bad news. How do you do it without crushing people? Patients remember years later how a doctor talked to them about a serious diagnosis. It turns out that empathy helps people make decisions sooner for cancers and seek treatment sooner. Sometimes this saves their lives. Still, we all know we, we have right brain, we have imagination, empathy, but we need to be very objective as leaders, too. The big question when I started out was, won't this undermine your objectivity? So I went into psychiatry, neuroscience, behavioral science. I studied all these disciplines over a couple of decades to ask that question. Can you still be objective and use your right brain and imagination? Turns out you can. So two lessons that I learned in 20 years. First of all, the idea that you'll be more objective if you're neutral emotionally, no. Emotions shape your thoughts even more when you're not consciously feeling them. So when you're not consciously feeling something, they're still pressing on you. But when you can acknowledge them or others can help you, you'll become more objective. Second thing I learned, the most important part of transformative empathy is the curiosity part. It's not the sympathy part. Sympathy is uncurious. We just talked about the benefits of sympathy, and it has a lot, but it's not therapeutic in the sense that empathy is, because it basically is a general fellow feeling. Empathic curiosity tries to zoom in on another's world. It's also empathic curiosity different than just knowing the data. I, you could tell me everything in the world about people being in refugee camps, but when I saw the VR film Clouds Over Sidra and I was inside a little girl's world, then I had new ideas about what could happen in her life. Finally, sympathy can lull you, in my view. It can create trust, but it can lull you. Empathy sharpens you. It helps you avoid being blindsided and look for aspects, empathic curiosity. Look, it helps you think, what am I missing? You should have empathic curiosity about your own reactions as well as other people's. I think it's very important to have this other way of thinking in addition to your left brain because problems are very hard to solve. And when you have two pathways, you're much better off. And the example I use about two pathways is if you're having a heart attack and you only have one major vessel, you're in trouble. But if you have an alternative pathway, empathic curiosity gives you an alternative pathway to understand the people that you work with.
So I just want to generate a few questions. I know you'll have many of your own, but I, I'm curious how empathy operates in your workplace. I want everybody to have sympathy, empathy, and compassion, and awe. So I, I really would be a nice fight to have, which we should we have more of. But I, see if you use empathic curiosity in your workplace. Do you think we can use technology to encourage empathy? Um, VR and AR, are they helpful or not? The internet questions we started with, thank you. Thank you.